Praise the Lord to all of you, those of you joining with us on Facebook Live. We welcome you this morning. We apologize for not starting it sooner, but uh, we've already been into a deep move of the Holy Ghost. I pray you can move right in with us quickly here at the Rock Church in Clute, Texas. Amen. Amen. The faith that God has put within us to every man there has been given what? The measure of faith. And when we move in into that relationship with the Lord through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the water baptism in Jesus' name, the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, it, it brings us in, is into a spiritual relationship with the Father. A place then where I go in prayer on a daily basis and I connect with Him and He, he connects with me. I'm in the earth, He's in heaven, and now we have this connection in the Spirit. And so I am able to pray things by His faith in this realm. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2, 20 and 21, he says, The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. We would put it in, in normal everyday language. He was saying it was he was using the Son of God's faith for day to day living. Amen. This is why the scripture teaches us for we Walk by faith and not by sight. You can't trust what you see. Right. The world is full of nice looking things and it's full of trinkets and gizmos and all kinds of attractions that, that draw our attention to them. But don't pay attention to those things because they are fleeting. They're just mirages on in the desert, if you please. Because when you get there, it's nowhere near nothing what you thought. Matter of fact, we were driving the other day and the boys were, our grandsons were in the back seat. And Parker asked the question, he says, how come the road looks wet up there? I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but about a quarter mile down the road the world the road looks wet and when you get to that spot on the road there's nothing there and so I, t I told him it's like a mirage well parker he's literal he asks okay what is a mirage and so you have to explain well it's something that appears in the desert but it's not really there because something inside wants it to be there it's not there so that heat on the road you get there and it's not there but it is there you just can't see it and so this is what the world has it's, it's full of mirages. It's full of places where it looks good, but when you get there, it's, it's really not what it's all cracked up to be. So the life that I have to live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I have to put my faith in what I know. Amen. And God's Word is forever settled where? Say it loud. It's settled in heaven. Not one jot nor one tittle of the law. That was Moses' law. Not even that would pass away until every last bit of it was fulfilled. And when the Christ came onto the scene and he, he lived and he died and was buried and he rose again, he completed the whole law. So that was finished and taken out of the way. So now we are in this period of time of grace going up to the coming of the Lord. And everything that we're involved in now when it comes to spiritual things will only be completed at the coming of Jesus. Amen. What are we doing? We're living every single moment by faith. Amen. So what, what does that mean? Does that mean that, that we just skate by? That, we're, that, that God's just going to provide everything I need and I won't have to be, I'm, nothing will be required of me? Absolutely not. Because there are moments in our lives when we have to speak the word of faith. Those things which are not as though they were. You need peace in your home, Sister Yolanda. It's not there now. You need to start speaking it as though it already is. Amen. Even when there's turmoil, even when there's no peace whatsoever, somebody has to be willing to take a stand on what you know, the Prince of Peace, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace peace. Yes. Well, now, guess what? He's seated on the throne. That makes him now the king of peace. Right. Do you need peace? Yes. 
Then start speaking peace. Amen. Do you need joy back in your life? Then start speaking joy. Don't just sit there and, and roll around in the molly grubs and, and in your pity party. Come on, we've, we've all thrown, thrown our own parties, our own pity parties, and we've felt sorry for poor little old me. Right. But ain't nobody got time for that. I'm sorry, Sister Annie. But ain't nobody got time for that. Right. That's a double negative. It's terrible language. It's terrible English. But it's the truth. We are sons of God for crying out loud. Right. Sons of God are never lacking in the things that our Father wants to give us. Amen. Come on, somebody, help me out. Oh, wait, well, you don't understand where I live. I don't have I don't have any money in the bank, and I, my, my car won't run. And well, hang on a second, that's not God's fault. Right. Did He give you a job? Did He provide in ways and means that that we we don't really pay attention to? But when I really stop and look at everything God has done, He's given me everything I've ever needed. Right. So. Do you need wisdom with your finances? To start speaking wisdom over your finances. God is not just for the spiritual things. He's also very involved with us in the here and the now. Right. Right. Amen. Come on, help me out right now. I, if you, if this, if, it does affect your spiritual walk. I understand. We've talked about this a lot in the years past, but... Um, I'm sorry for my TRC rag, but I forgot my handkerchief. This is a dish rag, by the way, and I'm wiping my face and mouth on it. So. Burn that. <laughs> but if my life here on this plane is not what it needs to be, then I'm going to have I'm going to struggle with life on, on this plane. God is my He's my father. Yeah, he's all of that, but I won't, I won't. He's my father. I'm a son of God. I'm, I'm never going to have to worry whether or not, not my father is going to provide. Sons of God need never worry about provision. Come on, say it out loud, Sister Julie. We are never in lack when we trust our father. Amen. You may not have enough in the moment, but your father, according to the scripture, has provided grace for grace, Amen. grace for now and grace for later. When you Amen. get to that moment in your life, when you need that provision, that last moment provision, Sister Julie, when God steps in at that right time, he takes us to the edge of ourselves, to the end of ourselves and said, okay, now you're ready for your miracle. But in the meantime, we have to speak words of faith and not doubt. Right, right, right. That's why I said a moment ago, there is no room for fear, doubt, and unbelief in the life of the believer. Right. Think about what the word believer means. What is it? A believer in Jesus Christ is someone who has already believed in God and his word. It's someone who has already taken a stand on this word and has already believed it and made it part of their daily life. Right. Yes. You didn't say amen very strong. It makes me wonder how many of us are making this word a part of our daily walk with God. Right. Well, still, it was kind of weak. <laughs> Maybe we need to talk about this a lot more. We already talked about this. We already preached from this. But perhaps we need to talk about how often we go into this. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. And if I speak the truth, you should say amen. amen. It's just simply for the fact that it's the truth. Amen. And when you say amen, you're agreeing with the word that was spoken. And when you agree with your mouth, your spirit man's hearing what you're saying and it agrees. Oh, oh yeah, that's what I already know inside. But my flesh sometimes is a little late catching up. So I'm going to speak in faith and say amen right. in the interim until, my, until I catch up with what God is doing. I'm just going to keep agreeing with him. Amen. 
but it's a good thing Whataburger never closes. <laughs> we might be here a while. Probably not. But I want to read to you one passage of scripture. I said I was, and I want to read this to you. This is a very tragic passage of scripture. But it is very poignant. It's from Numbers chapter 20. You can look up here on the screen. She has it. Or you can read along in your Bible or your electronic device. But Numbers chapter 20 beginning at verse 1. I'm not reading it. I'm just going to tell you what's going on. The people have come to the desert of Zin in the first month. And Miriam, Moses' sister, dies and is buried here. And there is no water here. And so the congregation gathers themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And now they are complaining and telling Moses, you brought us here. You've brought us into this place and now we're going to die. There's no water for us or our cattle. And then they, they say to Moses, why have you made us come out of Egypt? And I, 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 you read these verses, and you, 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 especially when you read after the children of Israel come out of Egypt, and you hear the things that were coming out of their mouths. They forget so quickly that while they were in Egypt, what were they doing? They were crying to God for a deliverer. Right. And when Moses showed up, and God demonstrated those ten plagues, and utterly and completely destroyed Egypt in the process and took them out with a mighty high hand and all of the riches there. They spoiled Egypt completely, took the gold and the silver with them and left. And now here they are and seen miracle after miracle. God brought them through the Red Sea. They get to the first place after the Red Sea. They find water, but it's bitter. God shows Moses a tree. He cuts the tree down and he throws it into the water and the waters become sweet. They go three days into the wilderness and find that place of bitter water. And then they, they go a little further and now the food is run out. And now they're complaining to Moses. And so, so Moses prays and God tells Moses what to do. They get up the next morning and guess what? There's, there's manna all over the ground. And they go out and they pick it up every day for six days. And on the seventh, they don't pick anything up because what was picked up on the sixth is always enough to last them through the seventh. And then on, and on Monday or Sunday, the first day of the week, it starts all over again, day after day, week after week, and month after month, provision has flowed from heaven for them. Now you and I should put ourselves into this story because this is, this is us. When things don't go the way I want to go, when things are not the way I think it ought to be, the first thing, or I will, I pray that it's not the first thing, but too many times it is the first thing that comes out of my mouth. I start complaining and fussing at God because of my current situation and my circumstances. And your silence says enough. Nobody wants to say amen to that because it means so much to us because it hits so close to home. Because our lives are filled with it. If you've lived very long, if you've been, if you've been alive for longer than, say, five or ten years, I, that's a stretch even there. You have felt the sting of, of pain. You felt the sting of death in your life. You felt something happen in, in your whole family situation, your finances. Whatever it would be, every last one of us can fall into this story and find our place. Miracle after miracle bring us to this chapter 20. Moses has been on Mount Sinai and it's, the fire came down. The earth shook and the law was given and, and, and great Great judgment fell because of sin and evil in the camp. And again, time after time, God was merciful and kind and gentle to those people. And yet they forgot. Matter of fact, it's one of the Psalms. I believe it's Psalm 78. The Bible says that indeed they were, that they forgot God and they, they tempted God. Ten times the Bible says they tempted God in the wilderness. Ten times. Can God? Can God provide a table in the wilderness? They ask that question. Uh -huh. Can God give us meat in the wilderness? Of course he can give us whatever it is we 
need. But too many times we, we cast our needs aside and we say, okay, God, this is what I want. And when he doesn't give us what we want, this is when we typically find fault with the Father. So let's read beginning at verse number 7. Moses and Aaron go to the tabernacle. Verse 7 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother. And read those next few words with me. Speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Now, why is that significant? Because the last time they needed water from a rock, it was about 37 years before. Now, I don't know how it happened, but that rock followed them. In, in Paul said in, I believe it's 1 Corinthians, and that rock that followed them was Christ. So that rock followed them. Whenever, wherever they went through the wilderness, that rock was there, always providing water. But for whatever reason, that was 37 years before when Moses had taken the rod and smote the rock and water came out. That was an act of faith in itself. But this time, it's different. This time, the Bible says, the Lord told him, you speak unto the rock before their eyes. Significant words. And it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So shalt thou give the congregation and their beast drink. And Moses took the rod, exactly what he was supposed to do from before the Lord as he commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them. This is where he made his first mistake. God told him to speak to the rock. Not to the people. Because now Moses is ticked off. Really. Does that sound like somebody that's very happy? He calls them rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? He wasn't standing there placid. He was. He was angry. And now in his anger, instead of speaking to the rock, he speaks to the congregation. But the Bible says in verse 11, and Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And the Bible says water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also. But don't, don't go stay on 11 first. God gave them water. He knew they needed the water. The people and their animals needed the water. And God told Moses, you speak to the rock and I will give them water. God gave them water. It wasn't on the people at this particular juncture. Now the problem is squarely upon the man of God. Because he did not speak to the rock. Verse 12 says, Because you what? Say it out loud. Believe. Believed me not. That's the, it's not the same word in the Hebrew and the Greek. But as the, as the word believe is in the New Testament, it's a, it's a verb there and it's a verb here. Meaning, Moses, you did not do what I told you to do. And if you would have done that, you would have sanctified me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Now you hear the word of the Lord this morning. You and I have no idea the people that we will impact simply because we exercise our faith in the one true living Lord. You're not going to witness to everybody. You're not going to be able to talk to every person that you come across. You're not going to be able to do it. 
but you have faith. And in the moment, in an act of faith where you open your mouth and you release the sound of faith like we did a while ago. That was an exercise. God was preparing us for this message right here. When I asked the question, as the Lord asked, to, to, if you, if that song wave maker means anything to you, then you raise your hands and you open your mouth and you let faith come out of you in a shout, in a prayer, in a word that you speak unto God in faith. And in that act, you have no idea how what you did impacted someone on the other side of the room. You sanctified God in the eyes of the people who saw you. Those people who thought that your marriage would end in divorce. Those people thought that your family would be splintered and scattered to the four winds. Saw you and heard you speak a word of faith over your home. And God supernaturally moved into your situation and smoothed everything out. Brought the family unit back together like it was supposed to. You, how did that happen? You didn't give up. You didn't throw in the towel. You spoke the word of faith and you sanctified God in the eyes of those people that saw you. Yeah. What would that have meant to the children of Israel? It would have meant the world to those people. They're faithless and unbelieving. Did you hear? I, I didn't read the first six verses, but when you get a chance, read Numbers 20. The whole chapter would be fine, but the first part of that chapter, they're questioning God and they're questioning Moses. Why in the world did you bring me here? You should have just left us in Egypt. We would have rather died in Egypt than die in this wilderness of, of starvation and thirst. Can't imagine, but we've done it ourselves. We've judged Israel so many times. We've read these verses and we've questioned, how could they not trust God? All of the provisions that he has made for them, I have to stop because those words smite me because I can't judge them because God's provision has been abundant in my life. But yet I have found reason to complain. How many times has a word of faith been spoken in my life where someone was impacted? That they thought that we were down and out. They thought that it was uh, that we were done for. That uh, the count was just counting down, just like they do in the ring. Ten, or they start with one, one, two. And that referee standing there, he's making that count. Three, and, and the people in the stands are looking at my life and they're thinking that he's down, he's done, it's over. Somewhere, somewhere down deep inside of us, we find one, one, just one small ounce of faith that I can speak one more word of faith. If I can just muster from my lips one simple word, I believe. So I'm going to speak right now in the name of Jesus upon the authority of God's word by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am rising up from this. I am healed. I am strengthened. I am renewed. I have to speak those things which are not as though they already are. I've said this a lot lately. It's what God did to Moses. I mean Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, he told him in Genesis 15 and then in chapter 20 or 22, I forget the exact chapter, God reiterated his covenant to Moses. I'm sorry. Abraham. Time and time again, God reminded Abraham of those things which are not. At this present. But he spoke them as if they already were. Matter of fact. That's, that verse is in Romans chapter 4. Paul mentions that verse. And you and I have got to be willing to speak to a rock. To a desert situation where there is no water. Where there is no immediate provision. And be able to speak it. And not be told by God. Because you believed me not. And you did not sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Read it. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. One moment, one act of emotion. And he did not speak when God said to speak. And it cost him his entrance into the promised land. I realize the promised land is not a type of heaven. Not, I'm not about to try to make that promised land a top of heaven in this room tonight or today. But I'm telling you, 
that you and I will face moments in our life as children of God that if I don't speak the moment that I am commanded to speak, it could cost me my soul. Because my humanity is exactly the way God gave it to me. I struggle with my humanity. I struggle with my faith at times just like you. And if I continue to listen to the voice of the enemy and I continue to listen to Ronald David Evans talking to myself and lamenting about my current status and situation and I refuse to open my mouth and speak a word of faith, I will begin to believe the lie. And believing the lie, I could lose my soul. This cost Moses everything. They've already been wandering in the desert for nearly 40 years since the, since the first arrival at the Jordan River when they couldn't go in because of, of the, 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 the evil report that came up of the spies. What I'm preaching to you this morning is this. If you and I can somehow reach back and remember all the good things that God has ever done in your life. And when you face the worst trial of your life, you will reach back to God and his word. Look at, look at the patriarchs of old. Look at, 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 at Enoch and, and look at, at Noah and look at Moses and Abraham. Look back at King David and look back at, the, at, at all of the prophets through history and find even into the New Testament, into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the foibles of the, of, the, of the disciples, even when Jesus was with them on the earth and realize that those men and women had their own struggles as well, but they overcome through faith. So would you close your eyes with me and what we have already experienced. The Spirit of the Lord is again wanting to seal up inside of our spirits that I have a sound inside of me. It's my voice. I must, with my voice, speak in faith. In the name of Jesus, Father, I have prayed already that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would fall upon these people. That our eyes would be flooded with light. That light of the knowledge of this great truth that we have in you. That Father, if you have provided us with the gift of the Holy Ghost, the wonderful gift of salvation, then surely, oh Father, you can do in us and through us and for us at every moment of our life exactly what is needed. God, you've not given us every bit of information that we need. You've not told us, oh Lord, the when. You've not given us all the, the, the intricate details of our situation of how and even maybe what or who. But now, oh Lord, it's our job and our responsibility to open our mouths and begin to speak those things which are not at the moment as though they already existed. So in the name of Jesus, I loose the very gift of faith into this room. God, these, these people, oh Lord, have come. They came expecting to hear a word from God, a promise, Father, that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. That, Lord, you would somehow come up short in your arm. Your arm would be short and you would not be able to answer. But, Father, now in the name of the Lord Jesus, we speak the word of faith at this moment. That upon this authority of this word, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the gift of faith is loosed. And whatever, O oh Lord, they have sought you for, whatever they have used their mouth for to praise and to glorify you, that, Lord, from this moment on, from this moment on, they will keep confessing this word of faith, not letting it become an idle word, but speaking it over and over and over until the fulfillment comes, until the grace arrives for just the right moment. But Father, we would really 
hope that you would have done it yesterday, but it didn't happen yesterday or the day before. So Lord, here we stand again before you bring in our petitions and our requests and we're confessing you're my father. You've never failed me. You've never forsaken me. And I am willing again, oh Lord, to cast every care of mine upon you and submit to your authority and say to you, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Here it is, Father. You do with it as you please because I'm going to trust you and I'm going to walk by faith. And Lord, I loose this upon your people right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Would you stand with me right now? Would you close your eyes and raise your hands? Come on, let your voice out one more time because you, 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 you spoke a word of faith. You let that word of faith come out now. Now, when there's no emotion to back it up, now you confess it again. Say, okay, Lord, I have believed. I have already believed in who you are. I've already believed in your sovereign power and ability. So I have already spoken. So, Lord, by faith, I say it again. I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. In Jesus' name, I accept your timing. I accept your timing. Father, I accept your timing. I, I, I accept who you're going to use, Lord. I expect how you're going to do it. I, I respect your will and all of that, Father. And by your help and grace, Lord, I won't question you. In the name of Jesus, I won't question you. I won't wonder why. I'll just say to you, Father, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song, the sweetest praise, drifts back from heaven's door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckoning me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, yes, Jesus. And how are we going to manage? How are we going to manage until Jesus comes? I'm going to daily walk by faith. In Jesus' name. Matter of fact, the just shall live by faith. Amen. And when Jesus comes, 1 Corinthians 10 no, I'm sorry. 13, that love chapter, we call it. Those gifts in there, yes. faith and hope, won't need them anymore. I've still thought about it, Brother Baldwin. But right now, we need faith. Yes. We have to exercise it daily. That moment's coming. That we won't need that anymore. We'll just enter into the love. You've got faith, hope, and love. The love's going to last forever because God is love. But the faith and the hope that I have in Christ now, that sustains us until the coming of the Lord. This world is not my home. I'm not staying here. I don't know about you, but I'm not staying here. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Thankful for what the Lord is doing among us. The spirit of the Lord that's working in us and through us. And 
there are supernatural things at work. So if you're not praying every day, I ask you again, why? Get involved. Yes. Get involved in the kingdom. The kingdom is spiritual. Get involved in the kingdom. Connect with God daily. And then, then you can walk in the spirit. And everything done in the spirit is done by, say it out loud, faith. Amen. Anything, Bishop? What else that you asked? <laughs> Sit down just for a second. I'm not going to linger. But I want you to turn to, I told Loris if you want me to, he showed me the scripture. He said if, uh, so if he want me to bring the scripture out, then uh, he'll ask me to say something. Daniel chapter 3, if you'll put this on the screen. And if you, if you need a mobile app, there are all... Bible apps are all free. Three seventeen through nineteen, and then three twenty four through twenty five. You want to know what faith really is? This is the perfect example of faith. Yes, amen. This is the faith that's the same yesterday. It'll be the same today. It'll be forever. This is the type of faith that you and I have to have. Yes. To finish this race. Yes, amen. They did not finish this race out of feelings. No, I guarantee you when these three young men were told that they were going to be thrown in a fiery furnace, they didn't have any Holy Ghost. Well, the, the Holy Ghost wasn't even existing at right, that time. Amen. They didn't have, they weren't filled with the Spirit. No. They had to trust in the word of what their rabbi told them and what their parents taught them and what was taught to them through their life. Yes. That God would never forsake him, but don't ever bow to another God. That's right. Amen. In this world today, you and I that live in, we live in, they're trying to get us to bow to their God. Yes. Right. That's right. Constantly. Yes. you talking about empowerment. They're talking about um, brainwashing and stuff. I, am I still on Facebook? Yes, sir. Take me off. <laughs> I talk about stuff on Facebook that can't handle it. 